Today, I'm gonna to walk you through my complete MD PhD application. My name is Adam. Right now, I'm an MD PhD student at UBC in my third year. I just started my first year of full time PhD in the fall. As you can see, it's uh, Christmas time. Let's get into the spirit of things by looking at my application. I'm gonna go through all my application documents from my letters of intent to my autobiographical essay to the MD portion of the application. Uh, it's been quite the journey for me. Uh, it took me three times to finally get in, but you know, uh, each time I feel like I learned pretty valuable lessons along the way on how to improve my application. Uh, and I feel like it made me overall a, a much stronger candidate and I honestly think a better person. And I don't get any credit for this, but that's okay. I mean and I think something that they definitely look in uh, in applicants is uh, that determination, that resilience, you know, being able to receive failure and then bounce back from it. So well, I'm gonna walk you through my application and what I think made me a successful applicant. And at the end, if you enjoy this video, please feel free to subscribe for more content like this. Uh, as well as feel free to give it a like. So let's start with the secondary application. Uh, and here we'll be going over uh, what I did for my extracurriculars as well as my grades and I think MCAT scores as well. But So I did my undergrad at Queens in psychology, a Bachelor of Science in psychology. And then I did my master's degree at Dalhousie University. So I did an extra two years to get my master's degree. Here uh, you need an English prerequisite for Queens University. I did that, it was English 160, which was modern prose fiction. If you go to Queens, I definitely highly recommend that as your English prereq, because I got an A plus in it. Uh, yeah, I had to work hard, but English was never my strong suit, so I definitely recommend taking English 160. And I'm writing a book. So this was my master's transcript here. Uh, I received A's, A pluses. I think basically most master's students get like either an, uh, an A or an A plus in their coursework. So. so this was my last year at Queens. Uh, my transcript here, so um, all A's and some A pluses. And I mean, I wouldn't worry about if you have some B's or even C's. It definitely took a lot of hard work to get these grades, but uh, totally doable. And even if you don't have as good grades, uh, there is still a very high chance of you to get in. This is my third year of Queens. I took pharmacology, some psych courses, and at 100, that was an easy course, micro biology and then another psych course this was stats and some more psych courses a lot of people apply with um, grades that are not as good as this and a lot of people apply with grades that are better than this if you completed a four-year degree I think they drop your lowest year of grades at UBC at least when you're applying so as you can see in my second year I definitely tried really hard and I studied quite hard uh, I'm definitely not the type of person where it's easy for me to get good grades it definitely took a lot of work and then in my uh, first year of Queens, I took Bio 100, all the, basically the life science courses. Here we're gonna move on to my extracurriculars. Maybe the other strength of my application was my research. I had, I think, two or three publications, uh, and I think that's pretty much the reason why I got into the PhD part and also the MD part. Uh, so they do like to see research, but again, it's not like cookie cutter. You, if you don't have research, but you have really strong leadership things, that is also, um, I think that also speaks volumes about you being able to manage multiple things and wanting to go into medicine. So for leadership, I put run club president. Uh, and notice just how I speak about these activities. Um, I said that I founded and led a mental health event. I exactly said how many participants there were and how much I raised. Even though $150 is not a lot, I think it still is good if you give specifics uh, on on each extracurricular activity. I think the other thing that admissions committees look for is consistency and how many hours you spend. That shows dedication and commitment. So the second entry for leadership was I was the head run and bike coach on the varsity triathlon team. So again, notice that I, how I put 50 varsity and developmental athletes and we consistently placed first in on Ontario's indoor triathlon circuit. 500 hours, so this was a pretty big activity. I would say sports in my undergrad um, were pretty key part of, of who I was. The second subset was service ethic. I was a loaded ladle volunteer during my time at Dalhousie. Make sure you have the verifiers that they can verify not only what you did, but the number of hours. My second entry under service ethic was I was a triathlon first aid tent volunteer. That's one medical related activity that I did. I was a peer health educator at Queens. I reached over 200 peers to promote health and wellness. Be very concrete in terms of how many people you reached out, what your impact was, what you learned. 
diversity of experiences. I uh, put content creator uh, for my YouTube channel. I said that I produced over 200 videos and gained 2,000 subscribers within the first year. And I also think talking to the camera helped me with interviews during the pandemic when it was all over Zoom. So I was a volunteer at a lab, not much to say there. Did varsity triathlon again. So for other diversity of experiences, I put chess player. And again, I included not just that I played chess, but where I was ranked uh, to show that, you know, I was ranked in the 95th percentile on chess.com. The additional detail is sometimes a key difference on, on whether or not you get an interview. So I did a lot of traveling experience. Uh, I also did varsity rowing. Uh, so that took a lot of my time in my undergrad. Okay, so now under employment at Queens, I had to pay my way through school. I was a TA for Psych 100, which was a pretty cool opportunity. Part-time, I was also a metadata student, basically organizing large-scale surveys. Um, I was a residence don, which meant mentoring and taking care of 21st year residents from diverse backgrounds because that shows that uh, you're able to lead, you're able to mentor, you're able to support. As well, I was an undergrad summer research student. I got the NSERC USRA award, and this is a really cool opportunity. I would highly encourage anyone that's trying to apply to med and that's interested in research uh, to, to apply for NSERC USRA. Yeah, I had three papers, two of them were first author. I'm still trying to publish my papers for my master's degree, so it, it can take a long time. Of course, if you're applying to MD, PhD, you should probably have at least one or two publications. I think I had one more one more first author. It wasn't in time for this application, but it was like a preprint by the time I applied through the MD PhD program. And this was just like a poster presentation. So now I talk about my awards. I got the Canada Graduate Scholarship for my master's degree, and that was valued at 17,500. Nova Scotia Graduate Scholarship, which was 20K for two years. These awards had no monetary value, but I included them most improved player for rowing, academic all star, and then Dean's Honor List with distinction. Here you have the opportunity to explain uh, why you're for example, your education has not been continuous, uh, part-time terms, or why you're not currently attending college or university. So let's move on to my autobiographical essay. Uh, and here I talk about why I basically want to pursue the MD-PhD program specifically at UBC. Uh, I think it's really important to convey that you know what an MD-PhD program is like. So it combines uh, clinical training as well as research. So I say that I want to provide direct care to patients, which is the clinical side, while discovering novel ways of understanding and treating people through research in neuroscience. So again, trying to show that you have an understanding of what the program is. And I talk about why I wanted to start this journey in the first place. I can combine my research to help patients like my grandpa while also caring for them at the bedside. Uh, that would be a pretty worthwhile career for me. So I basically try to convey that here. So here I talk about my publication in NeuroImage, as well as my master's degree, and how I wanna keep doing neuroscience research uh, to investigate clinical conditions. So I talk about exactly which profs I reached out to uh, and who I would potentially be working with. So this shows interest that you've already reached out to some profs at UBC, you can read this. Um, basically it's all about translating care from the bench to the bedside, being able to be in the clinic, take care of patients, you understand their problems firsthand, and then from there, that can inform your research questions. So uh, basically, that's what I put in my application. Uh, that was my autobiographical essay. Again, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And so hopefully at the end of the journey, you'll receive a letter like this or a similar letter to the university of your choice. And uh, I mean, even now, just looking at this, I, I still get goosebumps. So it's been incredibly rewarding. I absolutely love what I'm doing. And I think that if you really want it, you, you know, just go after it, follow your dreams, just no matter how long it takes to apply. I know some people that have applied for four or five times. You know, I also know people that got in after their third year, right? So it, it's all, each journey is individual. I know I didn't talk about MCAT scores, but you can look at my previous video where I talk about my application to the States. Uh, I'll link it somewhere here. Also, if you want to watch A Day in the Life, I, I'll put some links here or here or wherever. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, happy holidays. Cheers, everyone. The way that UBC MD PhD program works is that you do two years of medicine, followed by three years of PhD. Some people take four years. And then uh, finally, uh, the two last years are the clinical years of your MD as well. So it's a seven year program with a PhD sandwiched in between uh, two years each of medicine. Also, if you want to check out my US application, I have, I'll put in a link somewhere here.